Hello and welcome to Mac Format's weekly Apple extravaganza. I am Chris Finn. I'm Matt Bolton. And on this episode we talk about fonts. Emerging markets. Hmm. And, well, God help us, we talk about an iPhone case as well. Uh, let's start though with news from the world of Apple. So we're talking about fonts for five minutes. Actually, no, we're not. It's just a kickoff point. Because... Is, this one, is this a change where you just want to talk for five minutes <laughs> because you like fonts? I do like fonts. It is true. But um, this is predicated on the fact that uh, Huffler & Co., yes. which used to be Huffler & Fair Jones, as you probably picked up on, has started allowing you to sideload, download fonts from their site onto your device. So that you can, any of the fonts that they produce, you can, uh, if you've bought them already, you can use them on up to five devices just by visiting your account page uh, on the Huffler & Co. site and hitting download and it's, those fonts are then added to your iOS device. Which in and of itself is, is quite a cool little thing and, and uh, Huffler & Co., which used to be Huffler & Frere Jones before the big fallout, uh, is probably the world's most respected foundry and they make beautiful, beautiful fonts. So here on the one hand is one quite cool thing, you can add fonts to use in Pages and Keynote and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, from anywhere, retaining your corporate identity across these things, all that sort of stuff. But it kind of struck me that this is um, an interesting jump off point for talk about how iOS could evolve. Because right. this is a, that's a, a tiny example, but it is an example of iOS beginning to do the sorts of things that you're familiar with doing on a desktop, Mac or PC. Yeah. And you've written about the iPad Pro before. I have. Uh, the fictional iPod Pro, iPad Pro, we should say. Um, but it was a kind of thought experiment to see wh what this could be and where it could go. And I'm just sort of, I, I can't make up my mind about this. I'm trying to work out if, so we know that we're never going to get iOS and Mac OS X merging in any real sense. They share a bunch of core technologies, underlying foundations, fine. Yeah. I can't see them ever merging in a traditional sense. But you do wonder in 10 years time even, which one we'll see as a dominant force i.e. will there still be enough complexity of tasks we need, that, that we do, that we need a desktop OS for? Or will iOS have evolved to a point where the majority of the complex tasks we would traditionally do in a desktop form factor, Mac or PC, be achievable on iOS? Well, it depends what you mean by a dominant force, because you, surely you can argue that now that iOS is comfortably a dominant force. True, but it's certainly not, it hasn't eclipsed the desktop OS in terms of number of hours worked or done or achieved. I don't know. That's a good point, actually. I, I, I said that sentence. <laughs> and then I'm immediately thinking I'm, I might be wrong. It's an interesting idea. I wonder how many hours people spend on their iPhones compared to how much time they spend on their work PC, see? Yeah. Um, but I thought it was a, 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 an interesting thing to think about the point at which iOS becomes... How do we define it as becoming a mature operating system and a mature platform? Because by one definition, it was when it arrived, when iPhone OS arrived, partly because it was based on Unix, so there was a lot of underlying stuff that was very strong and stable anyway. But also, the rules that, we, we, that you might want to apply to it, I think, are changing. You can't define it by the same terms we'd define... Uh, a desktop, uh, a usable OS 20 years ago, 30 years ago when the, the GUI was announced. It's all a bit difficult because you look at something like Linux mm. that has constant new versions of various distros coming out. Kind of, You could look at any one of those and say, is this a mature OS? It does so much stuff. Mm. There's so much stuff they'll still add. And, you know, OS X has only just added versioning as a built-in, yeah. only just in, it, in comparison to its life. entire life. Mm. Um, and you just added a feature like versioning. So is OS X even mm. mature? Mm. Was it mature up until then? Uh, so it's a sort of maybe I'll know what I need from a mature OS when I see it. Maybe I, think that's the, I think that's the point. It's very much defined it. on what you do as a person. It did strike me that obviously the one thing we don't want to do to iOS, I, I don't think, is to add complexity for the sake of it. Um, we don't want to just like jam features into it and start working with pointers and fine grained control and file systems and that sort of stuff. But by the same token, it is frustrating when you bump up against those limitations. Yeah. And this stuff from Huffler and Co is a good example of um, getting around that basically. Yes. Um, it's a good way of uh, showing how it could evolve without having to slather a whole bunch of stuff on top of it. There's a lot of kind of workarounds to various issues. You know, mm -hmm. things that come from like not having a file system that's exposed yeah. to the user 
And I, I, sometimes and I, mean, I can the, never the, decide if having workarounds is fine or a failing of the operating system. Because the reason the workarounds are there is that people are used to working with something like a file system. Yeah. And sometimes they just feel like they need one. Yeah. So Dropbox, say, provides that functionality. Yeah. And iOS doesn't. Is iOS poorer for not doing it itself? Or is it just... It's moving on, and we need something like Dropbox to maybe give us a bridge sometimes, yeah. but it's okay. I do often wonder if um, a lot of the reason that people complain about certain things is just because they haven't... Uh, Apple Apple's way of doing things is often a very good way of doing things if you drink the Kool-Aid, if you work in it the way it wants you to work. But a lot of people just, through sheer stubbornness or through uh, history and inertia, don't want to work that way. Well, now you've finally stopped talking. We've got to move on to the wider world of tech. And today, uh, I want to talk about China for five minutes. Well, oh, I see. Yes, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, not specifically about China, but it's a good jumping off point um, because I'm going to use the consoles, the games consoles, okay. just as an example. Uh, China has recently lifted a ban on the import of games consoles. Oh. So, uh, so could you not buy games consoles in China? Not like the, the Xbox or the PlayStation. Really? I did not know that. Well, there's a massive market. As I understand. Quite a large market, yes. So that's opened up. Sony and Microsoft are basically both going, we've got new consoles. So the PS4 and Xbox One will both soon be sold in China. Nintendo has said it will create a new console, a lower-priced, purely emerging uh, market focused console which yeah. presumably I mean they could base it on the Wii and it runs Wii games they yeah. could just make it a old console emulator that runs old Mario games and things like that which a lot of people over here would, would have love. said they yeah. would buy yeah. um, <laughs> but th that's two re really interesting approaches one is good we can finally sell our stuff we currently make yeah. and send it over there and, and then the you've got Nintendo's which is good we can create a product that's tailored to this slightly different market and yeah. send it over there and it's interesting, partly in the context of Apple, um, partly in the context of other things, as to how companies crack uh, a, a slightly different new nut. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a labored metaphor, but yes. yes. Um, well, it's interesting because, in part because um, uh, with China being such an enormous market, with Apple putting so much focus on China with iOS, and obviously now with the iPhone 5S, and we infer at least that there's um, one of the reasons that we have a gold iPhone 5S is because of the uh, East Asians love for gold. I don't mean like <laughs> kind of love for gold. Um, but also it, China has a huge and emerging and very powerful middle class, um, which could obviously just buy PS4s and Xbox Ones. Um, but you're right that um, the, sort of the bigger market in terms of numbers is the emerging markets, which don't, don't have quite as much capital spending power as these middle classes have. We've had these uh, struggles to understand some of, uh, in particular, Apple's uh, strategy with the iPhone 5C, and it was they're going to make this new cheap plastic one mm. for for emerging markets, for markets like China. But it wasn't cheap. And then it wasn't cheap, yeah. and it hasn't, uh, it's, it's sold fine as far as we know, sold well, yeah. but it, it sounds like 5S is the hot stuff yeah. in China as opposed to... Yes. But FC. there again, we have, we've got to think about the fact that uh, when we see, when we talk about uh, Apple's approach to doing things, Apple doesn't like, Apple doesn't really care about selling large numbers of things. It yeah. cares about selling good numbers of expensive things. That's currently where its market is. Now, if the entire economy of the world changes, then I think Apple might have to rethink its uh, approach. But... Until until that point, it's still going to find enough affluent people to sell its products to. Apple's got no pressure to to build a cheap iPhone or a cheap Mac currently. No, but so what's Nintendo going to do yeah. with, it, with, it, with, it, with it? With the Wii? Do we know any more details of how it's? I, then, say, I say we. Yes, yeah, whatever. No, no. They've just said now that we can sell in China, and is, we will create a new. And are they creating a new console? thing just because to hit a new price point? Or is it because they think they can produce something that is more tailored to the cultural 
flavour of the country? Do they think basically that the Wii and the Wii U wouldn't sell in China? I don't know. I can think of a few. Well, it's not selling anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Wii sold. But, uh, 400 and something million lost this year, was it, for Nintendo? I saw it for I've seen different figures. I saw one figure of 450 go around, and then I saw one that was more like 200, which uh, is still a lot of loss, yeah. but is a huge difference from yes. 450. And as we said before, it doesn't hugely matter for Nintendo, at least yet, because they have uh, vast <laughs> huge cash piles. Pile of money. But they also ha- are again forecasting profits for next year, and they forecasted profit- profits last year for this year, and that didn't happen. Uh, a lot of the time, they've only lost... Uh, so the last quarter, I think it was, um, they lost money on their game-selling operations, but their huge pile of cash yeah. just sitting around in investments and things like that Made actually much. offset that loss... They just, uh, last quarter, they made a loss because they had a deferred tax payment yes. that they had to make. Yeah. Uh, and that was a one-off thing. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, I, I haven't seen, I haven't looked well into the latest figures for Nintendo to see if it's huge cash pile is still actually offsetting losses mm-hmm. and it's just the operations that are losing money. Yeah. But I can think of a few reasons why they would do things <laughs> do <them> differently, <laughs> in, differently in China. Maybe if they're selling to a new market that's relatively unfamiliar with um, computer games which I, I don't know whether they were black imports or anything mm. like that but they may go for a simpler system compared to the advanced chunky many many buttons and especially triggers. in the Wii U uh, with the game in the Wii U but especially like the Xbox the PlayStation 4 has a trackpad as well as all of these various buttons so it might be that Nintendo wants to sell a simpler controller mm. For a simpler set of games to a new market. Entirely possible. Okay, well, let's see if we can make uh, five minutes of talking about an iPhone case be worth your while watching. This then is the uh, GUI st- uh, case, which uh, grips your world with suction, it says. So basically, what it is, is an iPhone 5 5S case with on the back of it a pad of a material we like. Gecko foot stuff. It's effectively, yeah, exactly. So it sticks. It's not actually sticky to the touch, but when you push push it to stuff, it does stick to it because of little... Thousands of micro suction cups. Absolutely that. So um, it says on the back, uh, grips to flat glass, mirror, metal and marble surfaces only. Oh. Well, let's see about let's that. find out. So um, <laughs> we're going to attempt sticking this to various materials, basically. I have five materials. Matt doesn't know what they are. Matt has five materials, and I don't know what they are. And the poor cameraman, Tom, doesn't know where we're going to move during this uh, escapade. So let's start with my first one, which is um, my Mac. Oh, okay. So um, in a previous life, when I worked for a Mac user, we had a chap write into us who really wanted to know how, in the film Independence Day, Jeff Goldblum had his phone attached to the back of his Mac. But his Mac was magic and could hack into alien things. That's true. So, so we're going to try this. First of all, we're going to try this on glass because, you know, that's what it says. It's, uh, it's a bit dusty. But that's realistic. Exactly. So it does stick to glass. Hurrah. Okay. Quite, it sticks quite. <laughs> wow, I hope your screen doesn't pop up. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's try it sticking to this, which should be much more, more difficult because it's obviously slightly, not porous, but uh, yes. rough. Jeff. Oh. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. You're going to try a firmer push. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't break your iPad as well as your iPad, <laughs> did you? No. So, no. Aluminium is a no. No, it's the answer to aluminium. Although, okay. Is there an issue where if you've got all the gecko foot stuff dusty, that it won't grip as well? That is true, and this will become increasingly part of a problem, but uh, it seems okay so far. Okay. I should say the case is, is really slim and uh, non-invasive, isn't it? It is. Not sticky enough, either. Your turn. My turn. Uh, I'm just going to go and grab my thing. Okay. And I'm back. Okay. And next up is, uh, I, I sort of imagine you're shaving or something uh, yes. in, in your bathroom and you want to watch something I, or I listen to something. I can absolutely see the point of this. You pop the thing up next yep. to, in front of you on the mirror. This isn't a good example so for this. So we've got a, uh, a mirror. Yeah. It's a perfectly good example. Well, okay. You do rather cover your face. If you put the iPhone on that, you can't see well, the rest the of your face. the material is fine. <laughs> it's still mirror material. This is my iPhone, by the way, I should point out that <laughs> we've put in here. Bosh, jobs are good. Next up. You, you, there is a problem. Go. Next up. Uh, so we all know that the one of the things the iPhone's not particularly good at is uh, making phone calls. So, <laughs> okay. so I thought what you could do is take an old Nokia handset. Then you... <laughs> 
to go, so you're dropping someone else's phone. Yeah, this is this is not my phone either. What if the battery thing just comes off the back? That, that seems reasonably secure. Oh no, I think I had. There no, it goes. That's not a go. So that's not a go either. So sadly, my highly practical idea of sticking a Nokia phone to your iPhone is is no good. I always say about when uh, here's an old iPhone. iPhone. <laughs> that's kind of that's never going to work. But it's a it's a it's a smoother plastic. Okay, that, that works. works. So you can't dual SIM an iPhone. But you can dual iPhone. Hello. Buy. Sell. Buy. See, it works. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was saying about when I um, for, when I got my first iPhone, I was leaving three, and they offered me a BlackBerry and an N Nokia N95. <laughs> this is before they had the iPhone, obviously, yeah. to try to get me to stay. And I'm like, well, I can't just <laughs> Use duct tape both. those two together <laughs> to make an iPhone. Next up. Uh, next up is I'm going to have to get another big one. Okay. <laughs> How is this going to... <laughs> so you're in the pub, and this is like a wooden pub table. It's like a wooden pub table. A little bit. And you put your phone on, and you, you drink, and that's bad. Ah. And then you go to grab your phone... And in your drunken, horrible swipes, you can't knock it off the table. That's a actually you're you're spoiling this game by doing a serious suggestion, <laughs> which is genuinely <laughs> I can see practicality to that. So uh, there we go. I mean, it's not super sticky, but it works. <laughs> Why did you bring a table when we have a table here? This isn't wood. Okay. <laughs> this is like cheap veneer stuff. All right, all right, okay. Uh, next up, uh, you're out and about. You're a bit peckish, right. but what you've done, you see, is you have, with foresight, attached a Cadbury's chocolate bar to your... <laughs> have you? No. No. No, but... God, I've just seen where that's been. <laughs> okay, we've still got more to do. Let's, um, you know, clean that off. It'll be fine. So, uh, we're sort of... Um, you, you and someone else are out and about walking somewhere, and you need my to wife, maybe, for example. <laughs> yeah, for example. That's why you were cagey about someone else. It could have been anyone yeah. else. Um, and maybe you want to stop, and you, you need to see something on screen. You need both hands or something. Basically, will it stick to my back with clothes on? Obviously. Well, <laughs> can can you put it on my back and then just sort of leave it and take some notes? I'm gonna I'm gonna see. No. If your back was glass, then then maybe. <laughs> but as it stands, that would be just not a chance. Just my poor sports injury ankles. Well, our um, our idea of having an independent adjudicator to make sure there was no overlap hasn't worked because that was my next idea as well. <laughs> but it's okay. Oh. Do you have one more? Yeah. And then I'll do my final one. Uh, I have two more. What happened to the maths? I don't know. Do one more. Do your best last one, because we're over time anyway. Well, one of my last one was a moving car's roof. You yep. may object to that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just thinking about the practicality of filming it. Did, but did you drive in? I did drive in, actually. <laughs> What's the problem? Come on. No, we're not doing that. Right. Okay. Then uh, I was going to go with another practical one, which is boring. A cool. whiteboard for sort of sticking on and do doing we, stuff. Do we have a whiteboard? Uh, we can get one. Okay. Let me get one. Um, well, the whiteboard that Matt was going to get, it turns out, it was attached to the wall. Uh, so rather than, we're going to take the mountain to Mohammed, basically. So uh, come with me. Hello, it's a field trip. It's a field trip. Uh, so I'm doodling on the whiteboard and maybe start some video conferencing in. And I can FaceTime them perfectly well. So well, in fact, you can't make it off. There we go. I was just checking it wasn't going to slide. <laughs> when I... that's, that's a practical thing. Okay. All right, then. And for the last uh, of the examples, I thought it might be interesting to see if we could do a similar thing, basically. But let's see if it will attach to the ceiling. Oh. To a ceiling tile. Which obviously you can't put any pressure on because they just lift on. up. No. No. What this. about to the fan nearby? I'm just trying to get it covered in ceiling tile. It crap. <laughs> it's 
Fahim, don't tell our buildings and facilities people. It's sticking! You could, you could, I don't know, film something surreptitiously. You could... Oh yeah, that's super subtle. This whole thing is super subtle. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, this gooey iPhone case costs about 20 quid, and that hopefully will be the last time we ever feature an iPhone case on the show. Tell us about anything you think about any of the stuff we've talked about. Fonts, the emerging maturity of iOS, emerging markets, in fact, lots of things emerging in this show. Everything um, emerges. Uh, and whether you think you indeed would uh, want Apple to produce basically a cheap iPhone. Is that a thing you have been desperate for Apple to do because the iOS devices that they are are too expensive and there's nothing really you could tell us about this apart from telling us how idiotic we are for having done this show. Well, do you use a case? Do, or do you use your iPhone in the nude? You're being terrible. Not in the nude. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't, don't comment about that. But if you have a case, tell us which one you use and why because it's always interesting to hear hmm. people's reasoning behind that kind of stuff. Uh, please do leave your comments on all of that stuff in the comment section below the video. Don't forget you can subscribe to our YouTube channel for more of these and many other videos at youtube.com forward slash MacFormatUK. You can watch any of our previous episodes in this series or other lovely videos as well. And you can get a free trial of the super duper interactive MacFormat iPad App Edition magazine at macformat.com forward slash iPad. I should have eaten this chocolate. That's it for this week. See you next week. Bye. But that's okay. Gonna, that's you're you you're gonna be running around, running around, filming phones. Filming.